Welcome back, Time Crunch fans. I'm your host, Coach Adam Pulford. If you're new to the show, welcome. This podcast is geared toward the athletes that are short on time, but not short on motivation to learn, train, and become their best athlete selves. We aim to do this by taking topics from all things endurance sport and package them into shorter, actionable episodes so that you can listen, learn, and train right. Many of these topics are inspired by you, our audience, by submitting questions that you want to hear answered, and that's what we're going to do on today's show. So here is the question for today. It all stems around bike fit, and this one comes from Mike. Question is, how often should one get a professional bike fit for the road, gravel if any different, and does one even need a professional bike fit on the mountain bike? All right, so these are wonderful questions, Mike, and we'll spend our our whole time today answering them. So first and foremost, if you've never had a bike fit done by a professional fitter, I would definitely suggest getting it done. With the tools that we now have to measure your bike and body to ensure joint angles and positioning is set properly to the norms that are established out there for both performance and health, it's a bit of a no brainer to me. And this costs only, it costs a few hundred dollars. Okay. But if you're between upgrading your wheel set, for example, or getting your first bike fit, get the fit. (laughs) It's a wiser investment over the long run, in my opinion. So once you've had a good fit on your road bike, meaning you went to a reputable fitter who knows their stuff and you've spent several months, if not years in that position, if you don't have any pain, you don't really need to go get another fit anytime soon. Now, if you start to have issues like back pain, hot spots in your feet or hands, knee pain or any pain really, then go in for another fit. Seems logical. Now I ran these suggestions past CTS coach Renee Eastman who you've heard on previous podcasts of this show. She runs our physiology labs at CTS in Colorado Springs, both for lab testing and bike fitting. I told her that my philosophy was, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But she actually advised against that advice. She she says she sees a lot of people that come in with no known issues, but she can identify mobility issues in athletes riding in that same position, say for like 10 plus years, And even though the body has adapted to that over time, she can reposition the athlete with a better outcome. Additionally, if some equipment like saddles and bar tape, you know, they're not meant to last forever and they can get worn out. So coming in to get a bike fit, you can help confirm that things are worn out like, like a saddle. They don't last forever. So in effect, you may not have any major issues, but you may not be in as good a position as you think you are. So my updated advice on this is (laughs) it doesn't have to be broke in order to fix it. And if you're curious about if your bike fit is good or not, definitely get one. However, we have no strict timeline on this or like strict guidelines. I wouldn't advise getting a bike fit, say every like six months, for example, that's a little overboard, but I also wouldn't go 10 plus years without at least checking in on the bike fit. If you have a big If you have big life changes like a major surgery or huge chunks of time where you're off the bike that could change your mobility, or if you start doing yoga or strength training and your mobility improves, I would get another fit to check and make sure that you're in a good position, uh, especially if your body is changing. Finally, for a road fit, if you get a new bike, that's also a good time to get a new fit. Even if it's the same brand of bike, the geometry may vary a little bit differently and a bike fit can help you verify that. You can also learn how to measure your bike and translate that bike fit onto the new bike. If you're one of those athletes that enjoys getting a new bike every year. And this is good for many things, including knowing how to put the bike back into position. If it gets out of position, like flying to races or events. Now for a gravel bike, you can essentially take your road measurements and translate it to the gravel bike but there's a few nuances here. The saddle height will likely change. If you change your pedal and cleat interface and the reach oftentimes is a little shorter on a gravel versus a road bike, but that's, that's kind of individualized. My overall philosophy is the back of the bike is more science and the front of the bike is more art. What I mean by that is the overall knee and ankle angles, and therefore saddle height 
should be kept very similar bike to bike once you have a, a good fit. But your back angle, your reach, your drop, that can all adjust depending on the, the bike and the ride style that you prefer. Just know that your saddle height may need adjusting based on the geometry of the bike itself and if you're using different pedals, cleats, and shoes compared to the road bike. But you don't, you know, if you don't want to deal with all those complexities, just get a bike fit. Now for a mountain bike fit, my general philosophy still holds true here. Keep the saddle height roughly the same and adjust the reach, generally going to be quite a bit shorter compared to road and gravel. And with a good mountain bike fit, this can get a bit complicated because your pedals will definitely change from the road. Crank arms are trending to be a little bit shorter. The fore aft scoots up a bit and some prefer to ride flat pedals versus being clipped in. Additionally, the upper body reach is very individualized because it's not only the rider's feel, but the style of riding that you're doing and how much time that you'll spend on each bike. For example, a cross country or XC setup versus an enduro or all mountain setup, all compared to a downhill setup are going to be really different in the way of geometry of bikes and pretty different reaches and drops. An XC rider will be spending more time pedaling and have a closer to a, like a roadie ish sort of fit while the enduro rider will need both to pedal well and have the agility to move around the cockpit to handle the variable terrain. Downhill riders, they won't be pedaling that much, but when they do, they need to be able to produce real punchy power and they need to optimize reach for handling. So if this is your first mountain bike, I would definitely get a professional fit and make sure that you're in that right position. Learn what those measurements are and how to measure them, then adjust as needed for the ride style that you prefer. And I would say this holds true for really anybody getting their first mountain bike. I, I can't, can't express that enough. In my opinion, one should learn how to translate measurements to the next bike so that you're equipped to solve for problems if your bike gets out of position, like flying to an event, like I said before, or if something feels off. And since many mountain bikers transport their bikes in cars or trucks to get to trails to ride, um, or even shuttling, um, the bikes get knocked around quite a bit. And we also take a few more tumbles uh, than our paved counterparts. So uh, things can get off pretty easily. So learn how to measure your bike fit, please. So in summary, I would say this, if it ain't broke, you might be able to optimize it. How you move with your bike is a continuum throughout your life as your bikes and body change. I'm not telling you this to simply sell more bike fits. In fact, uh, here's a bit of a spoiler alert. I don't get any royalties if you walk into your local bike shop and get a proper fit. Nor do I get anything if you go to CTS in Colorado Springs and get a fit from Coach Renee. I just want you to have the truth behind it. And here's another truth. Athletes typically spend way more on expensive bike parts and upgrades on their bike where they could save money or put that money into a good bike fit and be better off for it. Better off in the way of aerodynamics, power production, efficiency, and less pain throughout your training journey. So I can say all of that, and we didn't even talk about a time trial fit, which is a whole other can of worms. But I'll save that for another episode. For now, uh, what I want to do is wrap this up. And in closing, I want to thank you, our listeners, for uh, writing in. It's really cool to hear what you're curious about, what you're struggling with in, in your journey as an athlete. And I hope that we're doing a, a great job in, in providing some of that advice along the way. In upcoming episodes, we'll be answering questions like how best to sprint, performance racing on Zwift, how best to come back from a major, major surgery, and a ton more of your questions. So if you have one for us, remember to head over to trainright.com backslash podcast and click on ask a training question. We'll do our best to answer that on a future episode. That's it. That's our show for today. Uh, thank you all for listening and please share it with a friend if, if you liked what you heard. Be sure to come back each week for more short and actionable training advice for your time crunch life. Thanks everyone.